let's talk about fantasy and let's talk about the San Diego Superchargers. And we're going to start at the man at the helm there. Quarterback position, Phillip Rivers, started the season, uh, I mean, as a top three guy at the position and then kind of fell off as the season wore on. Uh, where do you kind of see Phillip Rivers being uh, in fantasy next year? Still finished with pretty decent numbers. Sure did. But he wasn't an elite quarterback. There's no question about that. And I have Rivers outside of my top 10 as a guy that I would draft as a QB2, somewhere probably after the 10th or 11th round, somewhere in that area. The one thing that concerns me is Antonio Gates out for the first four games. 27% uh, of Rivers' touchdown passes over the last five years have gone to Gates. He's going to miss him. Uh, how about Melvin Gordon, though? Oh, my goodness. The rookie out of Wisconsin. Uh, looks like a very exciting young back. Marcus Grant, well, give me some, I guess, projections for, for the rookie. Well, I think he's a guy who can approach 1,000 yards this year. I, I'm starting to like him a little bit less because I think we have kind of undervalued hmm. what Danny Woodhead can bring to that offense. And I still think Brandon Oliver is going to see some short yards, short yardage, maybe some goal line carries as well. But of the rookie running backs, he's the guy that I have the highest simply because I think he's the guy who's going to be there and starting from week one. So I do like his upside, but I think uh, we should slow it out a little bit just because there's still some other guys in that backfield who will get some touches. Now, where they need more guys is on the offensive line. I don't think that they've mm -hmm. ever effectively replaced Nick Hardwick, and that's been a huge blow to both Phillip Rivers, and it bleeds over to the running game, too. So Melvin Gordon's draft position is really elevated because he is one of the few guys that you figure to be a feature back, but... I think there's better values other places. You know, I would also say this about Melvin Gordon that I like, especially in a PPR league. He's very adept at catching passes out of the backfield. Where do you uh, have Melvin Gordon in draft? See, the problem is Danny Woodhead's going to be that guy. Uh, I really think he is. Even Woodhead, coming off of that injury? Woodhead was really good before he got injured the year before. He had right. 76 catches. So uh, Gordon's a guy I'll take probably in the fourth or fifth round as an RB2. Uh, Danny Woodhead is a nice sleeper in PPR leagues. People aren't talking about him. Uh, sophomore slump, the dreaded sophomore slump, hit Keenan Allen very, very hard, Fabs. Uh, does he bounce back in year three? I think he does. It was amazing, too, because he had more targets last year I know. than he did as a rookie, and he had over 70 catches, but he barely scored any touchdowns. His yardage total was down. But all the reports that you've heard out of Chargers camp is that he's refocused. Uh, he, he's got a, a re-energized spirit with uh, Philip Rivers, and I think he's going to put up very good numbers at a price tag that could be maybe in the bargain basement, fifth round, sixth round, somewhere there. He could really help you. Adam, where, where do you project uh, Keenan Allen? This is going to be a good bounce back for him, too, because they're putting him on different spots in the field as well. They're putting him in the slot, so there's opportunities for him to improve on those numbers. I expect him to bounce back. The slot is, I think, more of his natural position. It should be, yeah. All right, that's going to do it for our San Diego Chargers Fantasy Preview. Be sure to go online right now, nfl.com slash fantasy, and sign up today.